I wanted to talk about storage of filament today if you have a 3D printer. Recently I got a 3D printer and learned you know fairly quickly that a lot of prints can fail if your filament is wet. It's important to keep your filament dry and there's a lot of different techniques out there on what people are using for storage to keep their spools dry because if you don't dry them and keep them in a relatively dry environment you will have some problems printing. So this is what I've been using. Uh, I picked up a bunch of cereal containers on Amazon. They're not terribly expensive. I'll put some links in the uh, description of what I used. And I found this is a really nice way to not only keep the spools dry, but it's easy to store them in shelving. They're stackable, so even if you don't have a shelf like I do, you can stack these a couple high if you want. And they're nicely sealed. They have a nice good seal. They're, they're locked on all four corners of the box itself. Like here, I'll show one. You can see they have these flaps in there. It's a nice tight fit to get these things open. All right. So it's a good fit. There's a good seal in there. There's a rubber seal. It's a good way to keep your filament nice and dry. But you just can't put the filament in a cereal container and keep it dry. You have to use something that they call uh, silica gels. It's also called decisant. Decisant, if I'm pronouncing that right. And this is what uh, this looks like. You can pick this up also on Amazon. They have a variety of sizes. You don't have to buy something this big. They have smaller packages and larger packages. And the, the orange ones seem to be the ones recommended to get. These have an orangey color to them. And there's some comments out there that the blue ones are not safe. I don't know if that's true or not, but I've read enough comments that you're better off getting the orange ones. So I'm not going to get into that whole topic. But So I've got the orange ones. And what happens is, over time, as the, they absorb the uh, moisture in the air, you can see here how they have turned a darker color. Now these are still good. They're not super dark yet. Uh, eventually they're going to turn almost a very dark, almost very dark green, a very, almost black looking color. And that means it's time to recharge them and or to dry them out. You can dry them out in an oven or a microwave. I've been using a microwave and the best thing is to follow the instructions from the manufacturer on how you dry this material out. For example, for this brand, they have two options here. You can do a microwave, 10 minutes at the frost, or an oven at 250 degrees for anywhere from a half an hour to two hours. I did the microwave option and it worked pretty well. I didn't do 10 minutes, mine was more about six minutes, but it depends on how much you dry out. The quantity of drying will control the, the timing. So you have to do a bit of a testing to see what's the best way to dry your filament. If, I mean dry your your silica gels, if you cook them too hot it could get pretty ugly. You don't want to do that. So you want to be careful how long you uh, cook them because otherwise they could melt the beads or possibly cause other issues. So be careful there. The other thing that I found very handy when you store your uh, spools in these cereal containers is putting some of these humidity meters in them. This is really a nice little feature to do and here's one for example. This is my favorite that I used and there's a variety of them out there on Maker World. You can pick from any one of many different flavors of holders to hold these meters and these meters can come in round versions or square versions and all this stuff is available on Amazon. What I found, I've tried three different versions of meters to hold on to in the cereal containers. This is the first one. I printed about five or six of these and I stopped using them. 
These I found were lengthy prints. They took approximately three hours to print, three hours and 20 minutes to print this on an X1C. It uses a lot of filament uses about 66 grams of filament and they didn't work well. They didn't work well because they're in some ways over engineered. They're nice. You store the filament in a little compartment back here but it's based on the size of the spool you have. Not all spools are created equal. So like here's a bamboo filament spool and it fits it perfectly. All right, it's a good fit. It doesn't fall off. It's got some edges on it. But I don't always use bamboo filament. For another example, I use uh, Sunlu. Sunlu has a narrower spool. And what I found was happening in the containers, it was constantly falling off to the side, going like this against the container, or possibly falling inside the inside lip, falling over like that. They didn't fit well, and it got kind of annoying. I also found they don't fit the Amazon meters that I was purchasing. In every case, I have to take a Dremel tool and grind this out quite a bit to get the meter to fit in there. This other one that fits on the bottom of the container, the meters fit beautifully in. You didn't have to do any dremeling. And although uh, Bamboo Studio will recommend a support tree, you don't need to. The support tree is unnecessary because once you put the meter in, you're not going to see that rough circle. See, here's what one looks like. And yeah, it's got a couple of rough edges on it here, but so what? Once you plug the meter in, you're never going to see it. And it's obviously quicker to print without a support tree. Then there was a third one that I tried. I kind of like the looks of this. I thought it was a neat idea. This one snaps onto the top of a container. So you would take this lid off. This is removable and it's kind of hard to open and I'm not going to try it right now. And it's on a hinge here. So you would remove this top piece entirely from the hinge and then you push this in and then the meter is held in here. Well, the problem with this is they don't fit too well in here. They're either too tight or too loose. I had one example. This one was so tight that when I pushed it in, I didn't get it squared up correctly. And when I tried to rotate it inside of that uh, fitting, I actually broke the, the print. You can see here it snapped off. And other people in the comments for this design were commenting about that, that it's not too strong there and it's easy to break because you're going to grab this like a handle trying to rotate it because it was very hard to uh, press these in. So I decided that since you are breaking the seal on the top of the cereal container to get these in, um, I decided not to use these. It just was not worth it. This is a similar print time uh, to the other one. The one that sits on the bottom takes about 44 minutes to print. This one takes about 49 minutes to print. Uh, also, as far as grams, this one uses about 23 grams of filament, and the one on the bottom of the uh, cereal container takes about 18 grams to print. And that one that is huge, that goes on the bottom, that takes a whopping 66 grams to print. So this is the one that's my favorite, and that's the one I'm using. Other things, not just about storage, that I just want to talk about real quick, so you know, especially if you're a newbie, uh, bamboo with these spools has got an interesting problem. In the older spools, they used to have a hole, and actually you can see the hole here, and they would just bend the filament over, stick it in a hole, and then when it got to the end of the spool, it would just come out. And then lately, newer spools have a piece of tape, and the, the, the whole idea is this filament is supposed to just let go from the tape. Well, what's been happening is the tape sticks so good that it takes the cardboard with it and then the tape stays stuck to the filament and it gets jammed up in your AMS unit. So be careful when you get near the end of a spool, if it's a bamboo, 
You may want to babysit it, and when it gets to the very end, clip it. Don't let this mess up your AMS unit, because it's, it's kind of a, a hassle if that sucks that tape partly into the, uh, the nozzle on the AMS. Now also, if you have a Bamboo Lab AMS unit, it's important to keep this unit dry also if you store some of your spools in the AMS, which is pretty common. Bamboo does provide two little pockets on the bottom of this unit to store some silica gels, but a lot of people have found that it's not really enough for this size chamber. So a lot of people have designed some nice holders here. You can see them here, 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 and here. And the center one even has a humidity meter in it. I know the camera is probably not picking that up. It's a little dark there. But anyway, you can easily install these. They don't require any screws. You would just take a spool out, for example, and then you can pull these out. Right. And then they have little lids on them, and then you can pour your silica gels in there. And as you can see, they just slide in. So there's a total of five of them. And there's quite a few different designs out there. I'll, again, put this design in my links from Maker World and where you can find uh, to print these. Now, also in the AMS, if you take out all of the spools, on the bottom of the AMS, when you first get your printer, there's a bay there, and you can see that right here. Eventually, they're going to wear out those packets that are in there, and you're going to want to replace the packets. But instead of replacing the packets, again, I recommend getting a print from Maker World. I'll show the link for this one. The lid is still from AMS, but the bottom is the print that you make. So instead of putting those bags in there, like uh, Bamboo Labs gives you, this has silica gel in it. And uh, this is a much nicer design. I like this. It's easier to uh, do these. And again, you can put these in the oven or microwave to rejuvenate them when they uh, get too moist. And they fit easily on the bottom of your AMS unit. I forgot to mention this. If you decide to use this design that fits inside your AMS unit for storing the silica gel. Somewhere along the line of late 2024, Bamboo Labs changed the inside container well, and the original design does not fit, and the person who designed this has not formally created a different um, file for the the change that Bamboo Labs made. So when you download this, if the height is 29.5 and you have a relatively new AMS unit, it's not going to fit correctly. Go into the scale option, uncheck the uniform scaling, and just change the z-axis to 27.5. Because otherwise, when you print this, it won't fit. You will never get that thing in there. So just change it to 27.5 and then it'll fit perfectly in there. These are the cereal containers that I picked up from Amazon. Uh, they usually have an $8 coupon available so make sure you click that. Um, I like these. They come in two colors. I mean, it's not much of a difference. You have this grayish color and then a black color. And the only thing that changes is that border up here as far as the color goes. You also get a measuring cup which is nice. And you get these stickers and a white marker. Uh, I didn't use these, but you know some people probably do, and they, they work really well. They're they're just the right size for a one kilogram spool. Um, and there's other brands out there, so it's not just this one you can buy. But th this one I knew uh, fit the various uh, humidity meters that were were out there. These are the humidity meters that I used in my cereal containers. And they come in uh, six, four, or two packs. And these are nice. They, they work very well. Most of the ones I found on Amazon all seem to have the same diameter. So you don't, I think, have to be too picky about which one you buy. They all generally fit the designs on Maker World. 
On these humidity meters, if you're concerned about the diameter, I put them on a set of calipers, and it's 1.6 inches, and in millimeters, that's about 41-something, about 41.3 millimeters. So that's the size to look for to make sure they fit in the average uh, design out there that you might find on Maker World.